Hello, and welcome to Research This, the podcast where we do the research and give you the answers. The histories of even some of our most loved products can often be obscured by the haze of time. Stories are told and retold until they begin to conflict and merge into legend. The history of one of the world's greatest commodities is no different. The legend begins with a man named Kaldi. Some say he was a 9th century Ethiopian, other accounts claim he lived in 15th century Yemen. Kaldi was a goat herder. One day, while out tending to his goats, he noticed them eating strange berries off the ground. As the day wore on into night, his goats seemed to be full of endless energy. Kaldi reports the strange and unearthly behavior to the abbot at the local monastery. The monks go collect these berries and find that by roasting and grinding these fruits, they could create a drink that would help them stay awake through many hours of prayer. This miraculous drink then makes its way to the king, flourishes among the aristocracy, and finally is traded and transported around Arabia and eventually into Europe. In reality, the coffee tree most likely began to grow in eastern Africa. Ethiopian hunters would consume the berries of these trees to help stave off hunger and give energy on hunts. These berries would travel from Ethiopia, across the Mandeb Strait, and into Yemen. Once in Yemen, the berries of the coffea arabica plant were roasted and ground. This mixture, first made in the 15th century, is now known the world over as coffee. Coffea Arabica comprises nearly 80% of the coffee prepared in the world. There are many other types of coffee plants, and new species are still being discovered. Coffee shrubs, or trees, produce fruits called cherries. Each one of these cherries contains two seeds, and after roasting these are known as coffee beans. Once planted, the coffee tree will begin producing fruit in three to five years. It will then continue to make fruit for 50 to 100 years. Varieties of coffee are grown all around the world, and much of it is grown in developing countries. Turkish coffee is one of the oldest methods of preparation, and not a specific type of bean. Each region in the Arabian Peninsula has their own twist on the classic Turkish preparation. But the basics are, coffee beans are roasted and then ground very fine, the finest grind of any style of coffee. These grounds, water, and if desired sugar, are then placed in a pot called an ebrit. The mix is allowed to come almost to a boil and is then cooled and reheated a few times. This creates a nice layer of foam on top. The coffee is then poured into small cups. The grandiose style sometimes seen in Turkish coffee houses of raising the pot high overhead and then pouring allows the drink to cool some and creates more foam. In the modern world, preparation comes down to two main styles, filter or drip coffee, which is the standard method of running hot water over roasted and ground coffee beans contained in a filter, and espresso, where a much smaller amount of hot water is squeezed under pressure through finely ground coffee beans. Whereas drip or filter coffee is commonly drank by itself, espresso is usually the base for other beverages such as the latte. So the big question for many people is, when I go to Starbucks, what should I order? And if you have little familiarity with the coffee house terms, it can be overwhelming. The best advice I can give is to search out your local area for coffee houses loved by locals. Even small, out-of-the-way locales, you can find coffee houses ran by people who are both knowledgeable and passionate about coffee. You will probably be able to find guidance and products you like better at these small businesses than a major busy chain. I'm of the opinion that Starbucks over roast their beans for the sake of consistency, and this can push people away from learning about the remarkable variety of coffee and into overdone dessert-like lattes and mochas. Don't be afraid to be a novice wherever you go. Starbucks baristas, and indeed baristas in general, have picked that profession because they are passionate about helping people discover new and exciting variations in coffee. By asking to sample products and giving descriptions of things that you like and don't like, they can help guide you to the drinks available that suit your taste. But if you want to order like a pro, while at the same time filling your need for caffeine, there are some simple tips. The first source of confusion is Starbucks drink sizes. A tall, rhymes with small, is 12 ounces. A grande is 16 ounces, and this is the size you'll get if you order a medium. For the larger sizes, a hot drink in the size venti will contain 20 ounces and usually has two shots of espresso. 
If you get a cold venti drink, it will be 24 ounces. And exclusively for ice drinks like coffee and tea, you can get a Trenta, which is 30 ounces. There is more caffeine in a tall drip coffee, also known as house coffee, than in a tall with a shot of espresso. If you want an espresso-based drink and need more speed, you can ask for a double shot or a dopio or even a triple shot. For a basic experience and a great place to start, order a drip coffee. Starbucks has three roasts available nearly all the time, a light or blonde roast, which is the mildest flavor with the most pronounced acidity a medium roast, which at Starbucks is nearly always their Pike Place blend. Medium roast typically is the most balanced of the roast, and it has a great mix of natural flavor and sweetness and acidity. Starbucks and many coffee houses will also offer a dark roast, which has a deep, almost charred flavor and a mild oiliness. Starbucks medium roast is closer to a dark roast in many local coffee shops, so if you seek out some of those great local places, you may be surprised at the diversity and flavor of a medium roast. You can get a drip coffee for a reasonable price anywhere and customize it with your choice of milk, sugar, or flavored syrups. If you love frothy, milky drinks with a little hint of coffee flavor, a latte would be for you. You can add any number of flavored syrups to a latte, Usually, the coffee house will have a board with a list of syrup flavors. Vanilla is a great place to start, but don't be afraid to branch out and try new, interesting flavors. Starbucks puts three pumps, which equates to three quarters of an ounce or one and a half tablespoons of syrup in a tall latte. This creates a drink that is mostly milk with a 30 milliliter shot of espresso, a medium sweetness and flavor, and a small layer of milk foam on top. If you want to ramp up the sweetness into dessert territory, you can ask for extra pumps. A cappuccino takes the same base as a latte, espresso, milk, and milk foam, but with altered proportions. Whereas a latte will be mostly milk, a standard cappuccino will have a 50-50 split of milk and milk foam with a shot of espresso. If you want more foam and less milk, you can order your cappuccino dry, or if you want mostly foam with just a splash of milk, extra dry. You wouldn't, however, order an extra wet or a light or no foam cappuccino, as that is essentially a latte. As with a latte, you can add flavored syrups to your cappuccino. The cappuccino at Starbucks will get one less pump of syrup as a latte due to the reduced overall volume of the drink. The sweetness and flavor of your cappuccino can be altered by adjusting the syrup. If chocolate is your flavor of choice, order a mocha. Mochas have a base of bittersweet to semi-sweet chocolate syrup, with a shot of espresso and steamed milk. Mocha also typically comes served with a whipped cream topping instead of the milk foam found in a latte. If you want more sweetness or chocolate flavor, you can ask to have additional chocolate sauce added to your drink, or at least at Starbucks, you can ask for chocolate walls, which means they'll drizzle the cup with chocolate sauce before pouring your drink. If you want to cut the sweetness and save a few calories, you can ask for no whip, or you can ask for foam no whip to remove the whip topping and replace it with milk foam. For those of us who try to watch our weight and sugar intake, these specialty drinks can really pack a punch. A tall, which is 12 12 ounces, unflavored latte from Starbucks has 150 calories and 13 grams of sugar. Adding syrup adds another 5 grams of sugar per pump, so 15 grams added sugar for a standard tall latte. A tall vanilla latte from Starbucks has 200 calories and 27 grams of sugar. However, many coffee shops, including Starbucks, offers light or skinny options of popular drinks. These usually substitute sugar-free syrup, non-fat milk, and leave off any whipped cream or added toppings. A tall, skinny vanilla latte at Starbucks has 100 calories and 12 grams of sugar. The last step in ordering like a pro at Starbucks or anywhere else is what order you should say all of these words in. So here is some advice straight from baristas themselves. First, order your food. If you are getting a pastry or a sandwich, this will take the longest to prepare, so get this order in first so it can be worked on while you finish with your drink order. Next, let your barista know what size drink you want and if you want it hot or iced. If you order a drink that's classically served hot, such as a latte or a mocha, and don't specify iced or hot, you'll get a hot, and the same goes with tea. Now, finally, you're at the core of your order. You let your barista know how much and at what temperature, and now they need to know what you want in your drink. An easy way to do this is to list any variations first, 
followed by the name of your drink. If you need decaf instead of regular coffee, lead with that. Then mention the type of milk, any additional shots of espresso or pumps of sauce or syrup, then any additional flavors of sauce or syrup, any extras such as whipped cream or chocolate chips on top, and finally, end with the name of your drink. While this can sound counterintuitive, it can make it much easier for you to translate exactly what you want with minimal confusion to your barista. Some local coffee shops may prefer orders in different ways, and as you frequent these shops, you can simply ask, you made this perfect, how should I order it next time? But at Starbucks, for example, if you're craving something that's like a chocolatey dessert with extra caffeine for a cold winter's morning, your order would go something like this. Hello, I'll have a tall, hot, almond milk double shot with two extra pumps of chocolate sauce, cafe mocha. And this would get you a hot drink made with two shots of espresso, almond milk, heated, then mixed with a total of five pumps chocolate sauce and topped with whipped cream. For a basic cup of coffee that you can add your own milk and sweetener to, you could order like this. Good morning, can I please have a grande pack place with room? And you'll receive a 16 ounce cup of medium roasted coffee with space in the cup for you to add some half and half and sweetener of your choice that's found at the bar in nearly every coffee shop. If it's a hot summer's day, you might try a venti iced unsweet green tea, and this will get you a mammoth 24 ounces of refreshing green tea without any added sugar or calories. I hope this episode has been helpful. There are so many additional topics to cover in the world of coffee, and I hope in the future I can do more episodes relating to a topic that is very near and dear my heart. If you have topics you would like for us to research, you can find us on Twitter at researchthispod or email us at researchthispod at gmail.com. Until next time, may your drinks be sweet and your mind be full. Thank you. This episode's music was the track Absolute Terror by the band Neolore from the album A Human Work. You can check out more of their music at Nihilor, that's N-I-H-I-L-O-R-E, dot bandcamp, dot com.